Oka Universe. Let's review a mad round in Serie A, a round that is not even over yet. And surprisingly many games have been played, we probably will get a full round, because two games that were on the brink have been moved to Monday and uh, so we'll talk about it and actually won uh, this evening, which you will get the result in the stats cast, which I decided to do on Wednesday. So a uh, full set of fixtures. Uh, and what can I say? Many, many, many goals. Uh, you know, we had a six goal game with a seven goal game with an eight goal game in there. We had one of the maddest comebacks that I've seen in a long time. A wonderful game, although it did not go uh, the way I hoped for. Wonderful game to, to watch. We had Milan cruising to a win, setting off my Sunday uh, at a very good pace. So, um, and we had a with Torino beating the crap out of Fiorentina that we had the WTF result of the round as well. So uh, many things to talk, to, to talk about. Um, I would say we have to go right into it and we'll start in Venice. And before I say anything about the game, can I just say that I, it might not be the nicest stadium, uh, I say, but the setting of the stadium in Venice is just a joy to watch. Even if the church is just a modern one, it still has a kind of this Venetian style. On the right, you have the tree, you have the church, you have then the lagoon in the background, you have the boats there. It is just awesome. This this is a visual feast. And then in addition, you know, the uh, Venezia fans already are colorful. And then Milan, yes, it was more black against uh, white, which is not something that I do enjoy um, too much. But in this case, it didn't bother me at all. It was just a joy. To watch and as a Milan fan in any way because already in second second minute Leo sets up a great assist sets up Slatan uh, who now scores against his 80th top five uh, league team you know one of those weird statistics but more importantly I think he has not scored in 23 calendar years I, as far as I know he hasn't scored in year 2000 which uh, what were you doing Slatan in many many ways that Eastman has I mean Milan was really really good for the most part, really controlled the game. The Venezia press uh, didn't bother them. They played through it. Uh, they created chances. They uh, controlled the game and never looked in trouble, except for maybe it's like 15 minutes before the half. Uh, if we had a nitpicky ref, uh, it could have been a penalty given because I think Florenzi was pulling a short, but at that moment, the player was already going down. So... Yeah, of course, I'm okay with it because I'm a Milan fan, but it didn't look like a foul to me. Uh, and I thought, yeah, mate, the one thing that we really need would be a quick goal in the second half as well. And it came. Uh, Messias had come on for South Salamaca, so a little bit more uh, punch forward. And then again, Leao sets Theo Hernandez up and he just walls it in a short corner. Really nicely taken goal. Very happy about that one. And then when the Austrian Svoboda uh, clears the ball on the line, to be honest, the goal should have come uh, before that already. It's a penalty, it's a red card for Svoboda. And Theo Nandes, not Ibra, Ibra gave the ball to Theo, uh, converts it. And what a penalty that was as well. This was one of the better penalties I've seen Milan score in a long time. 3-0 win, uh, it was a man up, they, uh, you could probably have done something for a goal difference, but I actually thought it was okay, get the 3-0 win, get out of the, out of the, the you did not have any injuries, yes, there are still players missing, players at the AFCON, get out of it, don't exert yourself uh, too much, so very happy with that performance overall. Uh, Sassuolo, 500 Empoli. I thought Empoli was good. <laughs> this, uh, it was a result I couldn't believe. Napoli get, uh, I think Petania scored the winner against Sampdoria, so he steps up. Udine against At 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 another one of those. I mean, this is what Atalanta can do to you. I think it was 3-0 at the half. 3-1, uh, yeah, 6-2. 6-2, all I can say, Atalanta just going crazy. Again, and uh, as, as we see the stats cast, just by uh, the jump in rating due to that win, they're now ahead of Napoli, although Napoli won too. So uh, pretty impressive uh, stuff there too. But the game of the weekend uh, must be, and this was one of the best, uh, most enjoyable games to watch in a long time. Especially if you're neutral. If you're a Roma fan, this was one of the worst games ever. Uh, and, you know, I am leaning Roma, but I have to say, 
Uh, not linear. I really like Roma. I wanted Roma to win this one. I was ecstatic when they had a 3-1 lead. But I also got to say, uh, the way the game went, uh, it was enjoyable in many, many ways. Should have been a draw, though. Uh, so I have to say, for as Mourinho said, for about 70 minutes, uh, they were really good, Roma. They had Juve largely under control. Uh, Tammy Abraham gave, gave them with Dybala with a great strike, uh, assisted by Chiesa. Gets an equalizer. Uh, but then I really had the feeling that Roma was actually the, largely the better team and probably should have, should have scored, scored before the half. The only thing was, you know, Chiesa is the one thorn in your uh, side. But then he suddenly comes off because he twisted his knee and as far as I know, he's already cruciate ligament and he's out for a while. That might be a big blow for Juventus uh, for things to come unless Dybala steps up, but also for the Italy squad. Um, yeah, that injury, he's not going to play in the playoffs. And uh, Chiesa being uh, generally considered one of their uh, most special players, that's going to be a uh, tough him. Uh, however, second half, it really start. I mean, it got a little bit testy at the end, but uh, second half starts off with Mkhitaryan take, taking a shot uh, that gets deflected. 2-1. And at that moment, Roma was flying. A uh, few minutes later, a uh, free kick given. Uh, the Licht uh, tripping up. Uh, the, um, well, I, I don't know who, who it was, but a uh, uh, trip from the Licht uh, got him a yellow card. And Lorenzo Pellegrini from far out. A wonderful free kick. A wonder, a really nicely, nicely taken free kick. Right in the corner, the wall is jumping. The picture perfect. 3-1. And Roma had the game you thought sealed. They were the better team. There was nothing really, really coming. However, what was coming is that Morata came and Arthur came. And that changed the, uh, that, that changed the complexion of the game because uh, he comes in, uh, Roma cannot really adjust to him and Roma cannot defend this season. Uh, plays a ball into Locatelli and it is 2-3 um, from Juve's uh, view. And then uh, just a few minutes later, uh, it's suddenly 3-3 because Kugulseski pulled, pulled, pulled one in. But at the moment that Locatelli pulled one in, I actually thought it's going to be tight. And then when Kulusevsky, you knew there was only one way to go. And then of all people, the Shilio nicely <laughs> running down the, uh, the side, putting it in to turn the game completely around in seven minutes. Juve turned a 3-1 down into a 4-3 up. Now, um... As a uh, pedantic Milan fan, Mourinho was slamming Angelotti for uh, giving up three goals in the Champions League final because he would not do that. No, you gave also three, goal, three goals in seven minutes. Crazy, absolutely crazy. But it didn't stop there. Suddenly, the Licht cannot keep, again cannot keep his hands to, <laughs> to himself. Uh, plays a handball. Penalty for Roma. And Pellegrini steps up and the uh, penalty is saved. And uh, I gotta say, this is now has to be given to Jesse. I really thought he was off the line, but he did not. The moves he made completely upset uh, Pellegrini enough or uh, distracted him enough because the penalty was really poorly taken and it was an easy save then for uh, Jesse. And at that moment, I, I think it was clear that Roma will not come back. I think they had only one uh, chance left. But what a game! And uh, yeah, Roma is still very much a project in many, many, many ways. Uh, other games, uh, we had um, Spezia winning in January. January, an absolute disaster. Inter, again playing in the third jerseys. I'm getting really tired because seemingly every home game for Inter is in those third jerseys. What's the matter? I mean, you have a rather decent looking home jersey, although it's also third jersey uh, there. Um, Lazio... Unlike Roma played actually, I mean, Roma played well for seven, seven, seven minutes, so I shouldn't say unlike like Roma, but I think Lazio acquitted themselves uh, quite well in that time, but Inter was, was very, um, Don, Donovan had an early goal through Martinez, did this out, then Bastoni with a great shot gives them uh, the lead, but out of nowhere seemingly Immobile comes back and then the game was rather open and Lazio really uh, fighting, showing much better uh, composure than they usually do uh, uh, as of late. 
Um, but give up the goal through screen, yeah, and very late on they could have gotten an equalizer. But again, uh, Inter getting, I think, my eighth win in the row. It really looks all Inter at the moment, it gotta be said. Uh, a remarkable result also for Salanetana, who win away to Hellas Verona. That's a, a big one. And then, as I said, I didn't see it yesterday, but that, uh, because it was the same time as the FCON, I probably should have watched this game. But, you know, I want to make an uh, effort to watch as much FCON as I can. Uh, can. Torino 4, Fiorentina 0, that came out of nowhere. And in the table it actually meant that now uh, Torino falls behind Roma, both teams losing but they're switching spaces. Uh, absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy results. But yeah, it was an exciting round in many ways. Um, the upcoming round uh, is of course featuring Atalanta against Inter as the big game on Sunday. Milan's playing on Monday. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, other than that, uh, I think it is uh, Salantana Lazio was interested with Lotito. Was the owner? Yes! Salantana has a new owner, so they can stay in the league, and that's uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, kind of a sleeper, probably Sampdoria against Torino. So yeah, um, I think it's all about Honestly, it's all about Atalanta Inter, and I really hope it's a, a good game, that one. But before that, we also have the Coppa Italia, um, uh, three games. Uh, starting on Wednesday, we have Atalanta against Venezia, Napoli, Fiorentina, interesting one, and Milan, Genoa, uh, where I would hope that Milan could, uh, that, that those two then on Thursday, where I really would hope that Milan could uh, save some players, but yeah, <laughs> squad depth is uh, at the moment rather 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 thin so don't think it's gonna happen in any case that was it from me from Serie A I'm happy that I could finally wear Torino at least a WTF result of the uh, weekend uh, made that this is a very cool uh, very soft shirt I gotta say any case please add something uh, below if you have uh, want to um, say something about this round uh, or if you disagree or you know just want to add something um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel and see more and I will talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day Bye.